thought I'd do a live feed from the store and give you guys kind of an update on how things have been going and how they've been progressing with the build. Now, if you've been with this channel for a while, you'll know that the little store behind me, it was really hard to get. <laughs> Not hard to buy, I guess, but hard to make it into a store. We had to get uh, the zoning approved. We had to make sure that uh, the city would allow us to open a store back here again. Even though it had been a store for almost 100 years, the zoning had changed and that was quite difficult. Add to that, we've been trying to put this little building up and all of this has been such an uphill battle, but we're making good progress. Now, I thought I'd give you guys an update here and show you how things have been going. Uh, the construction guys are here right now. So it gives me a chance to kind of walk around the site and not worry about lumber falling on my head or anything like that. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna flip this camera around and kind of give you guys the old uh, tour de Alex. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like making that French. It's not like I'm riding a bicycle through the store, but anyway, here we go. As you can see, um, last year we put this big giant picnic table. And when I say giant, I mean, it's, I don't know, 12 feet long or something, a Viking size picnic table. Um, we did have an antique tow truck sitting here. If you ask what happened to the tow truck, well, I sold it. One, uh, we need, we needed the money at the time. Uh, and two, um, it gave me an opportunity to have this area open. So when we're doing construction, it's easier. Don't know if I'll put another old vehicle here or not. If I do, I'd like to get an old truck maybe or something and, and turn it into a picnic table. So it looks like an old vehicle parked there, but really you can sit at it. Either way, that's a down the road kind of thing. For now though, we have this little, the building has grown. We have what's called a Boomtown storefront on our existing building, which means that they built up the top to look like the building was actually a fair bit taller than it was, but really it's peaked. Uh, single story. And we did the exact same type of build along the top here too. Um, Hans is on. He's watching the live feed right now. Hans is supposed to be cutting down a tree. I hope you're not watching this live feed from a treetop. Uh, Hans will be joining me at the store here later on today too. Um, we built the same type of storefront that we had um, on the other buildings. We wanted the architecture to look like it was put up around the same time. Now the goal here is to make it look like this was an old-fashioned garage that was retrofitted into a market and cafe. Weird concept, I know, but trust me, it fits with the building. Um, this will all be shiplap. They're starting to put the shiplap on later today. We had to wait for the uh, wood to get delivered and it's getting delivered uh, this afternoon. And the windows and doors, um, not the big overhead door, but the other window and door are coming this afternoon. So this front of the building will start to look like a front of a building very, very soon. Um, we got the electrical in place. As you can kind of see, there's an outlet here and uh, we're gonna have a plumber come and put a little uh, water outlet, a bib, they would call it. Um, so we can have a little garden hose on the front here because I got a water, that poor cedar is on death's door. I can't get water up to the front very easy right now. We've had no rain here, um, but this is all wildflowers. It looks like there's weeds growing in, but we have wildflowers and uh, lilies and tiger lilies or day lilies and tiger lilies in here. Um, same as on the other side too, where we put these uh, pillar ashes in which um, do get fairly tall, but I wanted to have some greenery out here in the front. Um, when we dug the trench out, um, it's been settling and uh, these sidewalk blocks need to be lifted and then re-leveled again. It's kind of like a sobriety test here right now. We're walking along it. <laughs> I was joking about that the other day. If you can manage to teeter your way along the, the wonky blocks, um, you're probably sober. Um, <laughs> but I don't want people to trip and fall on them. So we'll have to get that re-leveled out again. But uh, at least I have a walkway down the side. And um, you can see it matches pretty similar to what my neighbor has. They've got a little older style, but we did uh, white metal siding down here. So that's very, there's nothing really exciting about that other than the fact it's a walkway. But uh, when we go into the building, you can kind of see that um, we haven't really done much. Um, the walls are up. The rough-in is done for the bathroom. And we have, uh, this is the idea. You can kind of get a sense here with the double doors open. Well, there won't be my motorcycle in the way. I don't know if you guys saw the video the other day that I posted, but this is a motorcycle that I restored with my dad when I was my son Jason's age. We started working on this and I got it back. So it's only sitting here because I don't have room for it at home right now. It's only sitting here temporarily until I can make space for it. But eventually you will pass right through into the, uh, regular part of the store. And uh, my existing building was kind of built up for this purpose already. The other people had put this tile in here. It was intended to be used like that, but they didn't expect there'd be a, another building out there. The stained glass 
um, that you see up there. Some of you might remember it from the Potter's House series. If you haven't watched that series, um, you can either start watching it and see what it's all about. Um, but I'm headed back out there um, tomorrow morning, so I'll be out there myself again soon to re-renovate it. In fact, I may, uh, I may um, get it, uh, hopefully, while well, it's on the market for sale. Um, I'm going to probably edit the Potter's House series into one single episode. Uh, like I did with the Rolls-Royce renovation. You guys were watching that. I put the Rolls-Royce reno out and it took like, I don't know, 18, 19 months or something at the Rolls done. So I just edited that into one video. I'll probably do the same at the Potter's house because there are people who just want to watch it in one sitting. But that uh, stained glass window did come out of that house and it's going to be illuminated by a glass, uh, by a light on the other side. And this will be kind of just like a nice little nook and the door is open up and there you go. You're into the old store or back into the new store. Let's flip it around again. Still haven't done much with the renovations in the backyard. I'll try and steady the camera here so it's not too shaky. I apologize if it is sometimes a lot. Well, Hannah, move the old ambulance back here. While I'm away, I will not be taking it out to Provost as I did last time. Last time I took it out, I'd, I underestimated the size of the gas tank in that car. And well, let's just say I had a bit of an adventure. So the back of the building is pretty much just a big white wall, <laughs> but it doesn't need to be anything too fancy back here. Um, it needs to be secure. That's why I didn't, some people were asking, well, why didn't you put a whole bunch of windows up here um, to get more light in the building? The problem with that is that um, I don't want to have a bunch of break-ins and the more secure the building is, the, the better I can sleep at night. Um, this will get landscaped in the back. We'll do a nice little gradient uh, to that door so it'll be level at access and then kind of come down with a pretty little path and some picnic tables and we'll put uh, fresh sod out here. I've noticed that my every time I come in the backyard, look how awful the this isn't even grass anymore. If I didn't have weeds, I'd have no grass. If I didn't have crab grass, I'd have no grass at all. That's the world's worst blues song. Boom, 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 boom. If I didn't have crabgrass, boom, 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 boom. I'd have no grass at all. Um, I'm getting cherries back here. Look at this. I wonder if they're ripe. I'm going to try one. I'm going to try one of these and tell you. Mmm. Pooey. Yeah, I guess that's about right. I might have to harvest these. They're pretty good. I've got cherries. Oh, look, I've got cherries on this tree, too. Uh, this tree was here before me. No, look at all the cherries. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's lilac. I'm pretty sure that's a lilac bush. It's funny that when you move into a property, you slowly start to learn what things are. Rhubarb. And I think this is meant to be a, I planted, I think a couple uh, plum or uh, pear tree and a plum tree back here. And I don't have much. I'm going to walk on my old siding here. I have one lonely little plum, it looks like, starting there. And you can tell it's a plum because it looks like somebody's fuzzy butt. <laughs> um, but, oh no, look, there's other plums. So this one's bearing fruit this year. I'm pretty excited for that. Actually, I'm excited for that because um, Melissa and I like to make jam. And these little, these are all fruit-bearing little trees back here. There's Saskatoon's over there, which is a Western Canadian sort of thing. You make great jam out of that. Uh, but we make preserves and we give them out as gifts um, during the holidays. So now we've got extra trees, but those cherries are just about ripe. I might have to go dig back there a little bit. When I'm not on camera, I'll be foraging like a wild animal in the woods. Uh, <laughs> okay, I haven't done a, uh, a walkthrough. Look, there's nothing in here right now. I really want this space to feel very clean and very shoppable and open. But I don't want to have too much clutter in here. And... Uh, the cluttery space, this next is the other building. That's where the clutter is. Look, I just right, right through that doorway into my store. I did keep back a couple of the, uh, Teo Te Joaquin, I think is how you say it. I never, I'm terrible at pronouncing that. Somebody's gonna teach me the right way to say it. Teo Te Joaquin masks, I've got two of them. A little bit of the stuff that was left over from the Stan Reynolds collection. There's a musket down there and some fossils and a Ferris wheel and tin toys galore. Tin toys galore. Zoltar, the great gypsy. We got a Zoltar. Come see your fortune. Come see it too, no? 
Oh, Zoltar. Let's see. Do I have a do I have a $2 coin on me so I can get my fortune read? Let's see. I do. Let's see what Zoltar says today. You may have heard this, but Zoltar is here to tell you you can believe it. Age is simply a matter of mind. If you don't mind, then my friend, it doesn't matter. So go on. Be carefree like a little baby. But first, give Zoltar a little money, and I will give you a fortune. I already gave you money, Zoltar. Okay, what does Zoltar say today? Yeah, I'm gonna get this turned around. He says, a ship, he says, a ship in the harbor is safe. No, that's Dracula. That's the count. One, two, three, ah, ah, ah. He says, a ship in the harbor is safe. But that is not what ships are built for. Take risks and venture out of your comfort zone. If you don't move beyond where you are today, you will never have more or be more. There is a trip that you have been thinking of taking. Go! You will make some valuable new contacts. Well, I am. Zoltar, you're on the ball again. Zoltar uh, knows I'm going to Provost tomorrow, and I am going on a trip, and maybe I'll make some new friends along the way. So this sounds like Zoltar is up to speed and has given me a fortune. He's predicted what's already in the, in the works for me here today. <laughs> Good old Zoltar. Ah, uh, well, back in the shop. I have been, uh, if you remember, saw the video where I went to my friend uh, Greg's house, I picked up a whole pile of typewriters. In fact, um, as I've been thinning down the camera clash, and well, I've also been buying more, and everybody says, why are you buying? Look, there's old Barbies, Ghostbusters toys, my old fashioned clock, Dinky, Corgi, those are old AFX cars up there. Some of them with the original boxes. But I was talking about cameras. I have a pile of cameras, but what I've learned is that the 35 millimeter stuff and the lenses sell quite well. And people always say, Alex, why do you keep buying cameras? That's because I sell them regularly. There's always people coming in looking for cameras, maybe not this many. I could probably thin this out by at least half um, and still have a good selection here. But my, my worry is, now I've got almost as many typewriters as I do cameras. Not quite, but they take up a bit of room. These are all portable typewriters in there. Typewriter, typewriter, tick, 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 all the way along. Some are quite valuable and some are quite collectible. And I do have people that buy typewriters. So heck, why not have a whole row of typewriters? And of course, we carry some newer stuff too. And a lot of this, <laughs> oh, Zoltar, he's on a timer. So every so often he goes off and he, he tries to convince you to come and spend money with him. Um, we will probably move a lot of this sort of product over to the new space when that opens, and then we'll focus on this building as being more of the antiques and collectibles. So it'll have a different vibe, but at least we already have these in stock. I can just refixture and reimagine the new area. Um, like the, the retro toys, those will stay, but the tea related paraphernalia, if it's, if basically if it's food related um, or the soaps that we have, the, these are bath bombs. A bath bomb for teachers. It smells like grating papers, even on your honeymoon, or at least having PTSD from it. Um, what kids? Smells like a locked door. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Uh, there's some that are a little bit sassier there. I probably should have zoned that out there. Um, lather up a better personality, hand soap, or make others comfortable. Pretend to be happy. We get these uh, funny little things <laughs> mixed in. Let's see, this one is a candle for Karens. Smells like a can of hairspray and a 911 trigger finger. Someone needs to see the manager. Uh, awkward moments, smells like your entire life. Oh, anyway, some of that stuff just makes me smile and we end up having uh, a little bit of um, funny little stuff like that. I'm gonna keep the candy on this side, but I will move the coffee and tea and uh, the hemp products and that, the, more the food products over to the other end, as well as our Pickled garlic, which Melissa is a big fan of this stuff. She emptied like the whole jar on her own. I, I'm not kidding you. We brought some of this home and Melissa like went through it like nobody's business. Pickled carrots, uh, pickled beets. And then we've got all of our jams. Num, num, num. Uh, blueberry patch, Sask see there's Saskatoon jam, Saskatoon jam right there. Uh, all these hot sauces, which is the one Steven likes. He like Carolina Reaper. That one will, that's gonna peel your eyelids back. That one will. But all this fun stuff that we've been carrying in this store will probably start, some of it will make its way over to the new location because it'll be more uh, geared towards that. And then I can expand the, this sort of product, like the uh, antiques and collectibles and, and carry that forward more in the other area. Let's see. 
Sauntering through the back, you'll see a giant row of vintage Matchbox toys. And uh, this is a uh, Calice Lavalli. He's a guy that basically penned O Canada, our national anthem. So it's kind of cool to have his signature on a piece of uh, music framed. It's a nice little, very Canadian collectible. I've got my uh, Arthur Pellin polychromatic um, serigraphs. That's an original John Speed map from, oh boy, when is that from? The six, 1600s, it's old. 1610, I think, is when that's from. You know, it's hard to find really early maps, but that's one of them. Uh, yesterday, I went out and I picked up the uh, Telefunken amp and the PE turntable. They're in their home now. And boy, if I, if I get any more records in here, I'm going to... This is going to start to look like my dad's old house used to look. He had, when he passed, he left, I think it was 20,000 records, like LPs and 45s to my mom. That was an ordeal to go through. And then the back area, this is all the stuff that I just kind of put here temporarily. Well, hang on, I'm going to flip this around. This area back here is going to transform completely into a whole... You're not going to believe it. When I get it set up, you're going to be like, that's ridiculous. It's so cool. I have something really, really cool planned for this back area. We just, Jason and I set these shelves up to get ready for it, but that will happen when I get back um, from Provost in about a week's time. This whole area back here is gonna have a totally different vibe and, and feel for it. It's gonna be really, really cool. I'm excited for it. And of course, um, in a few days time, I believe that the uh, uh, Betty Jones piano is going back to her house. So uh, no, more, no more will I have the uh, sweet chords of Betty Jones grand piano sitting in my store, but it'll be back in her house piano is all cleaned up and her house is all cleaned up and it's just going to be nice and very fitting for it to go back to her. Um, we'll kind of miss it though. So it's going to be really, uh, hopefully it'll be in use and people will make some recordings and practice some music or maybe get some classes again on that piano. You think this, how many children this piano has served over the years, but thousands of kids probably learned at this piano and adults and it's going, going to go back into use. Oh, I have to show you this cool table I picked up. While we're back here, I was at a friend's place. Oh, you can't even really see it. It's the lower portion of a bicycle that's been uh, kind of cut off and turned into a table with these little side supports. Do the wheels turn? No, the wheels are fixed in place. That's too bad. That would, I guess that's a good thing it doesn't turn. Otherwise, you might get your finger stuck in there. But kind of a cool idea. And, and, idea. and then they made this little bucket here look like the basket of the bicycle. Uh, so the store is still very full. Can you tell that I took a thousand items out of this store? I can't. <laughs> we took a thousand things from the shop here and took them to auction. You can only imagine how full it was feeling in here. If I had all that stuff back, I don't know what I'd do. Um, but that piano is going just in the nick of time too because uh, when that piano goes, we'll have room for all the new stuff to show up. And uh, I was actually a little stressed about where everything was gonna fit, so it worked out really well. Um, oh, uh, Be a Kind Human asks, I'm not, well, I'm not, I'm not telling you to be somebody's name on here is be a kind human. I mean, you should be a kind human anyway. Uh, but be a kind human just asked a question and said, when are you going to do your auction? I'm just closing up my door here. Uh, the auction is scheduled for July 31st at Kastner Auctions, kauctions.ca. And that's where a whole bunch of stuff that you probably saw me buying and uh, picking up and putting in the store is going to be up for sale. Um, they have what's called a landing page up right now, which means it's just, it's telling you the auction is going to happen, but they haven't, uh, posted everything online yet. That should be very soon, probably like in the next uh, week or so. All that stuff should be live for bidding. Um, so we'll we'll do an update when that happens too. Um, so I'll take a couple minutes here. Oh, I, I literally can only take a couple minutes because I should be opening right away and I'll answer a couple of questions. I guess I'll do that while I'm walking my way back into the shop. Um, if you stop doing auctions, Caster might go out of business. No, I think they'll be fine. They were a thriving business before me, but I certainly do utilize them as much as I can um, for, for my needs. You know, when you're in this business, uh, there, and there are many people who only sell at auction. Um, I sell obviously out of the store, but uh, selling it at an auction is a really important part of my business because you have to be moving your product regularly. You, you have to be thinking about how you're going to get things turned over so that your store doesn't feel stagnant. Um, and when you have uh, space concerns, which you often will have when you have a shop like this, uh, an auction is a great place to really just move things along, get it off to the next person and make your store look fresh again. Um, I'm actually very fortunate that I deal with my business this way because a lot of times you go to, uh, 
you go to department stores and they will do sale racks or they'll have a discount store and they have to pay extra space, uh, extra rent for those spaces or it takes up extra square footage. Um, there's something I learned in retail and that's if you are in retail and you're um, selling products, if you keep discounting, oh, Mel Melanie, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, if you are discounting your property, or, or if you're discounting your products regularly, it diminishes the overall perceived value of everything else in the store. So we don't do sales per se. Actually, I've never done a sale at the store, I don't think. Um, no, nah, that's a lie. Sometimes I'll do like um, all weekend long records or 25% off or something um, uh, on certain categories that we're trying to thin out. But truth be told, um, that's the one thing I learned from Apple. They never put anything on sale. Um, but when I was at other stores like uh, the Bay or geez, every other store I did, they would have sale racks. And all it does is just people start to get into a routine of waiting for things to go on sale and you never get full value out of the, the other stuff. Um, the markup was so steep at places like um, the Gap or Old Navy and places like that, that they actually anticipate that most people will probably buy it when it goes on sale or when it's on promotion. But I don't want my business like that. Um, anyway, auction is very important for my business. And if you are doing uh, uh, antique buying and selling as your business, just think of a way to exit uh, your product out of your life once you're done with it. Once you've given it a fair shot at trying to sell it, just think of a way to exit it. Um, Flavored Games says, thanks for the videos. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. And thank you so much for the super chat. Um, do you have a website to buy straight from your store? Deborah? no, we do not. Um, if you see something on a video, you can certainly uh, write me. Um, or you can call the store and we do mail stuff out all the time. Every week I'm shipping stuff out to people all over the world. Uh, but we try and focus on in-house sales. Um, and we also try and focus on selling stuff at the auction, mainly because when we do an auction sale, we're selling, like in this case coming up, a thousand items at a time. And um, it's just too much for me to personally handle shipping off a thousand items. So that's why we try and do it in uh, uh, bigger sections like that. Uh, also, I see Matthew Fox is on. Hello, Matthew. And to everybody who's on the... Um, uh, we have sort of a, a groupie fan club page. Um, it was uh, Curiosity Fanatics, and it's kind of uh, uh, taken on a new form. You'll have to go check it out on Facebook. But they did this really great drawing of um, us as peanut characters, like from Charlie Brown. So uh, you have to check that out too. So guys, uh, I'm going to go open the store because I see a customer walk in who probably wants to maybe buy stuff, and I should probably do what I do and go sell things. So you guys have a wonderful day. Um, I'll be back with more videos from the Potter's House very soon, and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now, guys.